Hi everyone, and welcome back. I wanted to give a quick update on this week's closing price action for the S&P 500 and Bitcoin USD pair. Now, if you remember our last video, we discussed likely high time frame targets that we expected price to deliver towards going into the weekly close. In that video, I discussed the likelihood of price delivering towards two high time frame targets. The first one being dealing range extension of Thursday's range, which came in at 21,500. And then the second likely high time frame target I was talking about was the buy side liquidity and the, the external range exit that marked the completion of our current high time frame dealing range. Both these targets delivered predictably on Thursday and Friday, where on Thursday we saw continuation of the trend and distribution higher. And towards the end of the day, we looked for a trend reversal. On Thursdays, typically we see the high or low of the week. Fridays are likely to see a reversal to complete the weekly accumulation, manipulation and distribution profile. So far this Friday, we have seen clear signs of profit taking and distribution leading into the weekly close. However, this does not mean we've seen a complete reversal of the current trend. I would maintain that Saturday and Sunday are likely to maintain a further period of consolidation. Equally, Thursday's highs remain further targets for high time frame price action delivery. This would coincide with a raid on relative equal highs present in the indexes. Equally, I would argue that Thursday's highs remain a target for high time frame price action delivery. This target remains relevant so long as we have relative equal highs present in the S&P 500 index. These highs represent the lowest resistance liquidity available in the market relative to our current high time frame dealing range. This draw on liquidity should entice a further rally in the Bitcoin price. This draw on liquidity should entice a further rally in the Bitcoin price. If price fails to move higher over the weekend, I would draw your attention to this dealing range this swing low and Thursday's swing high. Within the discount, we have a fair value gap on the one hour. This is the new internal range liquidity. And should the market reverse as a result of a Judas swing on Sunday or Monday morning, we can expect the fair value gap on the one hour within this discount to act as a draw for internal range liquidity. The next thing I would like to do is present you with an annotated chart that might be useful in your study of ICT concepts. Firstly, I'd like to draw your attention to this fair value gap on the one hour. This fair value gap is a target for repricing going into the AM session for Friday. The time at which price is delivered to this fair value gap is not random. The only reason that price is rejected from this fair value gap on the one hour is because on the S&P 500, its own fair value gap is being filled in the AM session. Take note of the time this fair value gap is tagged. 8.45. That same time on the Bitcoin chart, 8.45, we have a first visit to this fair value gap. But we do not close it. We're in S&P, we did close. Well, on the 15 minute, we have a bullish order block. As a reminder, a bullish order block is a series of down close candles against the trend. So in an uptrend, the top of the first down close candle can act as support. 
Now I want to introduce you to the annotated chart, which I suggest you pause and study carefully. On Thursday, the high of the week is put in. Price is delivered above a high time frame level attacking buy side liquidity. As price energetically expands lower from its rejection, we create a fair value gap on the 5 minute. This presents an opportunity to enter short into the market. During London session, we reprice lower, but price is held just above the 1 hour fair value gap. As price gets rejected, artificial areas of liquidity are manufactured. The swing low provides an opportunity for sell side liquidity to be raided in the AM session during New York kill zone. In this instance, we have a period of consolidation, a period of manipulation, and a period of distribution. Smart money that bought the sell side liquidity needs to pair their orders with willing or unwilling opposing orders. The most logical location for these being above these equal highs and this swing high. I further suggest you study this fractal and annotate your charts in a similar fashion if you want to learn ICT concepts efficiently. Well, that's all I have for you for today. And I hope that um, everyone watching at least got a little bit of helpful information from this video. And just remember, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It's when you give of yourself that you truly give. And in any way, thanks for watching.